Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Amen. Oh, it's good to be here today. Uh, kuwa hapa leo. It's the first time I'm standing here on a Sunday service preaching in the last two years. Uh, so my heart is so glad. Kwa hivyo moyo wangu umefurahi sana. My name as has been said is Brian Mwashigadi. Jina langu ni Brian Mwashigadi. I love the Lord. Nampenda Bwana. I serve God here. Natumikia Bwana hapa. And the Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani. Chini ya Askofu Jimmy Kimani na mchungaji Alice. Our spiritual parents who are not here today. Wazazi wetu wa kiroho ambao hawako hapa. But the last time I spoke with them. Lakini wakati niliongea na wao mara ya mwisho. They know that we have this service. Wanajua kwamba tuko na ibada hii. Probably watch this live if they are not watching right now. And they send their greetings and their love. All the way from South Africa. Do you receive them? Do you receive their greetings? Hallelujah. They are away on assignment. Together with Pastor Joy as well. If you look around, you'll realize Pastor Millicent and Pastor Kaunda are not around. They are also away on assignment. Which is also on leave. Uh, and Pastor Kibera is also on leave. Just in case you're looking for them and you're not finding them in service. So we are here to occupy <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I fellowship at the at our Mirema campus. Also known as the Shiloh Worship Center. Have you received the greetings from Shiloh? That's not a different church. Because two years ago when we were starting the campus journey, the bishop told us that we are one congregation different locations. So just wait until the 40th year celebrations. On the 3rd of November, is it? November we are going to be here celebrating as one family. Because that's how the Lord would have it. And now, because I fellowship on the other side, I fellowship, um, uh, we have a youth service over at the other side. So I serve in the youth ministry among many others by the grace of God. And so it was also an, a, a great joy for me to know, to come and just meet the other youth who are in the main campus. And the bishop allowed me to make this announcement. It's going to be on your own screen, but this is a special one. Turn to your neighbor, tell them neighbor. Wednesday 14th. Wednesday 14th. We are kicking off the Harvest Conference 2024. And let me tell you, we are so excited about it. This year is going to be bigger than all the rest. And we are looking forward. I think this is going to be our eighth year of Harvest. In case you're a visitor, the Harvest Conference is our youth conference. Now, most churches don't have youth conferences. As we have our youth conference. And so we're inviting all the young people. Just allow me to do this. If you're a young person, please rise up on your feet. I thank you, precious, for being quick on your feet. Let's celebrate all these young people as they are standing. I celebrate these young people. Ay, 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 you can do better. They are almost more than those who are seated. This is the future. Yes, this is the future. Somebody is coming to you with a piece of paper. That piece of paper is just, we just are asking for your details. So, please give us your name. Your real name. Your working phone number. And your email address. Email. sasa. So give us your real name, your working phone number, and your email address. Um, we just want to know our youth um, congregation. 
So this, I will, I will be saying a couple of things as you feel it. We want you to feel it. See, take away assignment in is sit in. Hey, you write your name and then you hand it over to the person who has given it to you. You can just do it even when you're standing. No pressure. All over, even out in the tent, I see a few people standing. Thank you very much. I'm feeling in We appreciate you. As you can read on that piece of paper, it's just saying we are so glad that you are part of us in the youth ministry here. And we would love to get in touch with you. You know, maybe because of different modalities of life, you're not able to make it for a youth service. But that's why we are inviting you. We just like to reach out to you. So that we can know how best to serve you. It will also serve as our invitation to the Harvest Conference 2024. So, somebody will come and pick it. Lift your hand if you have filled. All right, and then when you feel it, you can sit down. You may sit down. Now, Wednesday the 14th at night. That will be our opening night. We are, uh, we have, uh, we have great joy to just let you know it's going to be lit. Over at the Shiloh Worship Center. And, it is, and the evening is open to everyone. Then on Thursday and Friday, it's the whole day from 9 in the morning. And then in the evenings of both those days, all evenings are open to everyone. So turn to your neighbor. Tell them my neighbor. It concerns you. Uh, tell them this is hey, asikubali, Tell them to asikubali kukaa nyumbani. Uh, tell them don't agree to stay at home. That week we will not have midweek services here at the main campus. All roads are leading up the hill. If you don't know the, where the Shiloh Worship Center is, when you exit that gate, go all the way straight to Cooperative Bank or Milema. You will see a road that goes up. Take that road and go with it where it is going. The first serious entrance on your right <laughs> is marked Shiloh Worship Center and Cornerstone Academy Junior School. I think there's a hand in the back there. Somebody's lifting their hand. They're done. Thank you. So that's where Shiloh is. And all of you are invited. Please turn to your neighbor. Ask them, what have you Let them tell you. Let them tell you what they've had. What have you had? If there's somebody who has not had I have some of my young people, some of my young people in the house who I have placed there, they will come to you to explain. Tuko sawa? Kwa tent, tuko sawa? Asanti na waona. All right. Hallelujah. Has everybody given their piece of paper? Thank you for complying. Thank you for your obedience. Now I want us, just because we came to the house of God, to at the count of three to lift up a shout of praise to the great I am and I want you to just as you are celebrating Jesus I want you to bring gratitude to your heart I want you to remember all the things that the Lord has done for you this week and if you are, if you are grateful about anything I want you to have it in your mind as you're giving the Lord this great praise. I'm, I'm giving you a few seconds. 
to just remember all his benefits. Just remember all his benefits. Just remember all his benefits. And if you can just bring it to your mouth and say, Thank you, Jesus. Aye, we are not in a hurry. Come on, this year, KZ. Just take a moment to just remember all his benefits. Just remember, I feel it in my spirit that we have many reasons to be grateful for. Many things we can bless the Lord concerning our lives. I know you may have many needs that you're trusting God to do. But for a second, just put those things aside. And just bring, bring some things that the Lord has already done. And if you can open up your mouth and just say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on, do not be silent. I know the Lord has been good to you. I know the Lord has been good to you. I know he's been good to you. Take a minute, take a minute longer. Take a minute longer. If for nothing else today, we're going to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Master, we honor you. We extol your royal name. You have been so good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ribe shako talabazi andaraposa. Apreka tulamazeke sheke remaza. You are so worthy. You are so good. You have been so good. We pause in the midst of this service to acknowledge you, Lord Jesus. We pause to follow your leading and to just say, thank you, Baba. You have done us well. You have done us well. You have preserved our lives from the pits of hell. You have saved us right from the brink of destruction. You have poured out your blessing on us. Oh, Jesus, we are saying thank you. Wewe ni moema, wewe ni moema, wewe ni moema. Asante, wewe ni moema, asante. Asante, ninasema asante. Asante, wewe ni moema. Asante, asante, nasema asante, 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 wewe ni mwema, asante, asante, nasema Just a minute, just a minute, church, lift your voice, say my name, Meona. Nimeona, we mawako, Nimeona, Fadiliza, Koe, Baba, Nase. Just one more time, church, lift your voice. Nimeona, Nimeona, we Your voice, celebrate the name of Jesus. Lift 
One more time, celebrate Jesus. He's been wonderful. Has he been good to you? Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What a God we serve. What a good God we serve. Now we are in a new month. The Lord has been good. And the new month here means a new season. In fact, we are starting a new series as well. And we are going to be looking at for the next couple of weeks in all our campuses. We are going to be looking at Christian disciplines. Or spiritual disciplines or practices. And so today I'm just going to run the, uh, an overview, the importance of these practices. Why should we practice these spiritual doctrines or spiritual practices? Why should we practice these spiritual disciplines? We are in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4. And we are going to read from verse 1 to verse 8. The Bible says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter time some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is, it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane old wives' fables and exercise yourself towards godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. And that is the word of the Lord. Now the Apostle Paul is writing he is writing to his son Timothy. He has served the Lord faithfully. He has um, lived a life that is pleasing to God. He has done a lot of work of ministry. He has been beaten and bruised and battered and so many other things. But that did not stop him. In fact, he has been a faithful steward of that which he received. Now he has come to a point where he needs to pass it on to somebody else. So he writes these letters to Timothy, his son. And so he's saying to them, among many other things, that now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith. Now he's passing across an important message. This message is important because of what it says. But, but also because of who says it. You people would remember during COVID that there was a time when we had things called curfews. And during the curfews, the CS would come and say, uh, these are the new number of infections. And so from now, those people, uh, the curfew has moved from 10, the curfew will now be from 7. 
na anatuambia kwamba kutotoka nje ile uh, makata ya kutotoka nje atakuwa yanaanza saa moja and what would happen is that all of us would comply na sisi wote tulikuwa tunakubaliana na haya maneno i remember one time we were coming from the wedding of one of our brothers in the worship team in loitoktok na kumbuka kwamba tulikuwa tunatoka kwenye harusi ya ndugu mmoja and when we were somewhere on the way they made their dress na wakati tulikuwa kwenye barabara wakasema kutoa akatoa hiyo i think uh, i think we were in kitengela or somewhere tulikuwa mahali kama kitengela pal and then they said the curfew has has now gone to 8 and it was at 10 when we were leaving Nairobi. Ah tulikuwa tunatoka saa 4 na Nairobi na tulikuwa kitengela wakasema sasa kwamba makataya ametoka kutoka saa 4 amekuja mpaka saa 2. There was no way we were going to make it home before that 8. Hakuna vile tulikuwa tufike kabla hiyo saa. We should have seen how worried we were. Ungeona vile tulikuwa tumeshikwa na hofu. Because it mattered that the person has said it is a person with authority. Kwa sababu yule alikuwa amesema hayo maneno Now during the same season there were some people who would come up on social media. Kuna watu walikuwa wanakuja kwenye mitandaoni. And they would say ah we have moved the curfew the curfew has now moved it is at 7. It was at 7 now the curfew is at 10. Wanasema ya kwamba makata yametoka kutoka saa moja inaenda mpaka saa nne. None of you would go out. Hakuna mtu alikuwa anatoka nje. Because that is just an ordinary human being that has decided he's tired and so amesema abadilishe masaa. Kwa sababu Uh, it was somebody who was just an ordinary person who had decided to move the hours so what what did we do we stayed until we were told by the person in authority tulikuwa tunaendelea bila tulikuwa mpaka tuambiwe na yule waziri ambaye the point is it matters who is saying a message ina maanisha sana ni nani anasema ujumbe fulani we were saying earlier that if i come and i tell you as your pastor mimi nikikuja nikwambia kitu kama mchungaji wako and i tell you you are useless na nikuja nikwambia kwamba wewe ni mtu bure. You will think about those words the whole week. Utafikiria ndio hayo maneno wiki You will wonder zima. is it a revelation I have received of you or useless? Utafikiria kama ni ufunuo nimepata? You will think did I see something in the spirit? Utajiuliza kama nilisema kitu katika You will roho? ask yourself many questions. Utajiuliza maswali mengi sana. But if you went outside lakini ukienda pale nje and then the the conductor of the matatu that you took na yule utingo akwambie as your alighting tells you you are useless ukitoka kwenye hilo matatu anakwambia wewe ni you will not think of those words beyond lunch time utafikiria juu ya hayo maneno because you don't know him kwa sababu hata humjui he doesn't know you hata yeye hakujui so those words really don't carry any weight hizo haya maneno hayana maana uzito maishani mwako why because it matters who is saying something kwa sababu ina maanisha ina Now the words that we just read Paul is saying these are not just my words. Uh, he, says, he says it is the spirit that is expressly saying. Uh, to say expressly means that you should place extra weight on these words. That the Holy Spirit has placed emphasis on this message specifically. He says now the spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith. Some of them will go away from the faith. There will be the danger of deception. There will be the danger of false teaching. And when we look at what the apostle Paul is saying we realize we are now living in such days so he is speaking to his son Timothy and it is sort of a warning he says because those days are coming and they are actually here with us there are things that you ought to continue doing so that you do not fall into the folly of those latter days in fact he says now that you know in, he would imply that now that you know that those days some will depart from the faith In other words you should do everything you can do to stay in the faith. Now what does it mean to stay in the faith or to depart from the faith? It doesn't mean that you're losing your ability to believe. It doesn't mean that now you are no longer believing. It easily just means that you are losing the content of what Christians should believe. 
In other words, you're no longer practicing the things that make a Christian a Christian. That you have departed from the faith. That if I look at you, I shall be able to tell that this one, the way they are looking, the way they are acting, the way they are speaking, they are a Christian. If I look at you and you don't have those things, it would be right for me to say this one is not a Christian. Praise the there Lord. are things that make a believer a believer. In school they used to tell us if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck then it is very much likely a duck. In other words, it is the characteristics of the duck that will make you decide this is a duck. It is very highly unlikely that it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, and then it is a monkey. And so if I come to you, or a brother or sister comes to you, and says to you, the way I am seeing you, you are not a Christian. Or you are not a practicing believer. Maybe you are just a professing believer. You are not a practicing believer. You cannot say that you, you are judging me. Especially my generation and lower. And they, we like that word, you are judging me. But if I went to a, a mango tree, or if I went to just a random tree, and I look and I see mangoes hanging from that from the branches, and then I say, this is a mango tree. The mango cannot speak up and say, you are judging me. No, it is because it is bearing so if I look at the way you are acting and I look and I listen to the way you are speaking I can easily tell whether you are a believer or not. Now even me aside God looking at you is able to tell you are not acting like a believer. If you read the letters of Jesus to the churches in Revelation Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 3 you find that Jesus is writing these letters to the angels in the various churches, the seven churches. And he says to them, I know your works. To some he says, they are neither hot nor cold. Now, this is not man that is judging. This is Jesus Christ himself, the head of the church that is looking at the churches. And he's saying, I am looking at you. And I know your works. They are neither hot nor cold. To some of them, he says, consider the heights from which you have fallen. He says to others, strengthen that which remains. Because the way you guys are acting, it is not Christ-like. In fact, some of them is saying, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because it is characteristic of a believer or of a church to be hot and not lukewarm. We are talking about character. The things that make a people a people. The things that make your family your family. For instance, you will say, some of you will say, in my family, we always pray before we go to bed. Now, if your children get to a certain age, and they start to say, when they are from their bedroom, they start to say, uh, they say, I don't feel like praying tonight. 
uh, today I don't want to come. You, if you grew up in a house like the one I grew up in, you would highly likely be, be familiar with the, the phrase, Hapani. This is my place. You say, Hapa kwangu tunaombaga. This place of mine usually Wenye hawataki kuomba hawako hapa kwangu. Those who don't want to pray, they are not in Now the house. people you are telling that don't have anywhere else to go. <laughs> By the time, ukisama haya huna mahali pengine pa kwenda. So they have to comply. Ni lazima ukaweza kuti. Why? Because that is, those are the characters that make your family your family. Kwa sababu hizo diyo tambia zinafanya familia yako ikawa familia. And you are not willing to let go of them for anything. Na hutaweza kuziachilia kwa kitu chochingine chochote. Bwana isu wa sifiwe. Now there are certain characters that have been laid down by Christ himself that make us believers. In fact, that mark a believer. That if I got into a room full of people and I sat with them just a little bit, I can be able to pick out a believer because this is such that even without speaking I can tell the kindness in this man he is likely a man of God because how are the disciples first called Christians in Antioch because they acted like Christ they were marked by certain characteristics that were in Jesus. Those are the things we are calling spiritual disciplines. That's what we are calling the believer's practice. Now the word discipline has the idea of a, spe a specific training that is supposed to produce a specific character. So when you're in school and they tell you, I will discipline you, what they're saying is that we will set you right. Growing up when visitors would come to your house, and you come and you're playing, playing like that as if <laughs> you look at visitors' food like you don't get food. There is a look that your mother gives you. You guys know the look. Now, children these days don't know the look. A friend of ours was telling us, and then the daughter asks, Mom, what's wrong with your face? <laughs> but in our days, you knew the look. One look was enough to tell you, get up, get down from that table. That same look is telling you when these people leave, you better fast and pray that they will spend the night here. <laughs> they are saying, I will discipline you. I will get you back on track. Because people in this house don't act like that. Spiritual disciplines have the idea of those practices that keep us in line as believers. Why? So that we do not go away from the faith. We do not veer off or we do not um, become apostate. We do not depart from the things that should make, that make us us. The danger of going away from the things that make us us as Christians, is that if we don't practice them, then Christianity is no longer Christianity. 
we will hand down things that cannot hold any water to the coming generations. And we will have done a great disservice to all those men and women who kept the faith ahead of us. Because, because about 2,000 years ago, Jesus is speaking to his disciples in Matthew 28 and 19. He says to them, Go ye therefore. He says, And make disciples. Verse 19. He says, make disciples, baptizing them in, my, in the name of the Father. And of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He goes ahead and he's telling them, do not be afraid, I am with you until the end of the age. Now those disciples became faithful to what Jesus told them. They went out in the practice of what they saw Jesus doing. And 2,000 years later, we still have that same precious gospel that was given down to us. The danger of not practicing the spiritual disciplines is that if the Lord should tarry, this may not survive another 2,000 years. Now that gives it perspective, doesn't it? Because you realize your role to play in this. It is not the role of the pastor. Because the pastor will come here and preach on Sunday and pray on Sunday. But then there are six more days in between before you come here again. Yet you have children in your house who ought to see the believers practice in action. They cannot just live off what they saw on Sunday. There has to be a constant, continuous practice in our homes. There are non believers in our offices and places of business. In our schools, who are depending on us to carry out this practice of believers, because that may be the only gospel they see. It may be the only way they will ever come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is why it is important for you to practice the spiritual disciplines. Because souls and destinies are pegged on your obedience. Just the pra pa pastors alone is not enough. The fivefold ministers are not enough. Every believer must carry out their practice wherever they are. Because the church gathered like this is equipped. I said the church gathered like this is for equipping. But the church scattered after this service is for influencing. If we refuse to practice after the church has scattered after we have left after the service, then we stand in the way of influence. We will just be saying, oh, these Gen Zs have no God. Oh, this generation is a godless generation. It may highly likely be that nothing was passed down to them. They did not see the believers practice in action. Turn to your neighbor, tell them I'm talking to you. You have a responsibility. The, the importance of us beginning this series 
is so that you can be stirred up inside of your heart to know that you have a role to play. If the kingdom of heaven is going to be populated, if we are going to plunder hell, you must play an active role. It takes every individual deciding to be a doer of the word. Because if I refuse to bribe the police, it doesn't matter how expensive it might be on me. And then you also refuse and another believer refuses and all 2,000 of us at DCIKZ refuse then there's some influence beginning to happen. Something is starting to happen in the community. But if I do it by myself and maybe a few more brothers do it like 10 and then the other 1900 will do it at their convenience then our influence has been watered down that's how the gospel begins to look like it is limited that's how Christianity starts to look like it is a ridicule even though it is a glorious thing tell your neighbor neighbor you are in this this is about you the spiritual disciplines are practices that by design can lead to life transformation if we practice them our lives can be transformed forever an example of these spiritual disciplines is reading the bible I am sure that you have read the Bible when you're feeling down and disappointed. And you have felt encouraged every time you read the word. I am sure that there is a time that you were anxious and worried. And you opened your Bible and you read something and your spirit was revived. Do I have a witness? Now that is just proof of the life transforming power of the spiritual disciplines. Another example is studying the word. Because reading the word and studying are different things. To read the word, it just you can open and just read something. But to study is to take a chunk of time and to sit with that thing until you have understood something. It transforms your life when you learn to study the word of God. That when something has been preached, you have heard it here or somewhere with a different teacher of the word. You can go out and sit down with that portion of scripture and study it for yourself. Because the only book you will ever read in the world where every time you open it, the author is present is the Bible. He can tell you exactly what he meant. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, we must study the word. Another example of these spiritual disciplines is prayer that you must give yourself to prayer. Ah, you must give yourself to pray. Not just to pray for your food. To take a chunk of time and say, this time is for prayer. And it is both corporate prayer and individual prayer as well. That I should have some time in my day that is dedicated to prayer. These are spiritual disciplines that mark every believer. 
that if you are not doing them, then you are little by little departing from the faith as we have defined it. These are the things that make us us. Another one, another, another spiritual discipline is fasting. There is corporate fasting and individual fasting. That as a believer in the length of your life, you must create some time where you are fasting. Even without being told by anybody. Whether it is keeping a meal and fasting to pray or taking a full day or for some of you maybe food is very inconsequential let us kuza kawaida ukulangi sometimes you don't even eat certain days so you can decide i'm going to go on a screen fast mimi nitaweza kuwa na kwa sababu some of us nitaweza kufunga some of us in this place if you take away news from them sitaweza they are limping and dead you have that urge to know what happened. You watch the news at 7. You watch the news at 9. In between, you go to those other stations of your vernacular language and you're looking for the news at before 8 Apple. And then you wait for the news at 9. And after you watch the news at 11, when they are over, you want to peep at CNN and Al Jazeera. When you wake up in the morning, you have bought a newspaper. You are just recycling this information in your head. You, you, you have a thirst for information. <laughs> now, if that is you, you can decide I'm going to fast uh, the screens. I will only use my phone if it is phone calls. Uh, some of us, if we did that, you start to shake. People are thinking, oh, my brother, you're so weak. You have not eaten anything. They are saying, no, no, no. <laughs> but we are talking about fasting. Now, as you continue to do these things, they deepen our relationship with God. They make us more like Christ. That way when people look at us, like we said at the beginning in the importance, as people look at us, they can be able to tell there is a God who is working in our generation. You know you are a kind person. You have allowed kindness to rule your life. I like to give this example that when you are living in a flat and you have gone up you've gone you've gone to yeah you've gone to to hang your clothes and then you get up there and you find that somebody has put their clothes on your lines you say hey these people don't know me you, these people are testing my salvation. You take all those clothes and you throw them down. They say, people should learn to jitegemea. Then you, your neighbor comes to church one day. And they find you leading powerfully worship and prayer. Saying, lift up those holy hands, church. <laughs> they are there wondering which holy hands. Because you've just refused to practice kindness. That you can allow that you will be inconvenienced just a little bit. So that somebody else can be of benefit, can be benefited. I know some of you are wondering, hey, sasa ni ache mtu mungine ya nikia kwa line zangu, sa, hey, nguo zangu zita kauka. Unana kwanza, in this weather, you need five working days for your clothes to kauka. Tuna sama nizi ache ivo. Kika hali hii, unaitaji siku tano, nyo nguo zako zikauka. 
Paul used to say when he's writing his letters, <laughs> think about these things. The Holy Spirit will make it plain to you. <laughs> but these things, as we practice them, they make us more like Christ. They are like training exercises for our spiritual life. We make a choice to do them regularly. We know it is right to do them. But we must make a choice to do them. I don't know how many of you here go to the gym. I don't know how many of you maybe work out here and there. But you know that for you to remain healthy and fit, you don't go to the gym one day, the whole day, and then the rest of the year you sit down. You say, I worked out on the 31st of January. So I shall eat because I am a, a healthy living. I work out. It, it doesn't benefit you that way, does it? I don't know how many of you can remember the best meal you have ever eaten. We are just thinking about, you know, some, uh, well, it depends on who we are asking. For some of you, you know, we like different things. We were at an event on Friday and um, it was a high school. And uh, the teacher, one of the teachers that was sitting next to me was, was trying to, was telling me, I don't know why the children hate Giveri. You know, it is such a balanced diet. It has carbohydrates, it has proteins, it has vitamins. I, it is such a balanced diet. And I was just there saying, I know, but we still don't want it. <laughs> Give us a better balanced diet. Now, it doesn't matter you, the best food you have ever eaten. You might remember it. You know as much as I do that it was not that best meal that is sustaining you until today. You, you are sustained by the ordinary foods that there is nothing to write home about them. You ate some regular shmegula ugali ndengu the other day. It didn't even have any greens, but it gave you a little bit of nutrients to bring you to today. Maybe things were not going very well. Maybe you just ate ugali na turungi juzi. You don't remember it. In fact, you don't even want to remember that day. But it gave you enough nutrients to come to the next day. Maybe you ate those things that people say is in a fact you ate njahe and rice. <laughs> and there is, it was just a regular meal. You, you don't desire it. But it, was, it is those regular meals that give you strength for every day. Otherwise, if you say you will only be waiting for your favorite meal, those are the days you will eat. Some of us will be dead by now. Because some of those meals are so expensive, you can't afford to eat them every day for 30 days. If that is true about our physical days, lives, even for our spiritual health, it is exactly the same. You cannot live on that glorious power-packed conference you attended. Man, in that conference, the preacher hammered the word. Oh, your, your, your fire was coming from his mouth. But now that happened in the month of May. So you're waiting for me next year until fire comes from another mouth. We must practice those disciplines by ourselves. Some days as I am doing my Bible study, there is nothing to write home about. You know those days that you read the Bible and you are wondering... Okay, it was mahali. You told Pastor Brian, please just share with us what you read this morning. 
You see, let me tell you, let me just tell you what I read yesterday. <laughs> because what I read today, I don't know how I can share it with somebody. It was beneficial to me. But I don't know what journey you people are on. So let me share. Yesterday's was a bit more, I can share it with people. It is not every day that you read the word that you shake like this and you're like, oh, power. But if you wait until you shake every day so that you read the word, you will never read it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I'm talking to you. You must practice those spiritual disciplines. You must practice them. Even when you don't feel like it. Because if you do them, they will make you like Christ. They will, they will bring other people to Christ. They will influence the world for Christ. They, they will benefit you in this life. And they will benefit you in the life to come. That is why we must do them. That is why we must give ourselves to these disciplines. That is why we must join all those people that have stayed in it and be counted as playing our part. There are some of those that are inward disciplines. Inward disciplines are the ones that you practice by yourself, for yourself, on the inside. For example, meditation. Meditating on the word of God. You take a portion of scripture and you meditate upon it until it becomes who you are. You say, this one thought, let it pervade my mind and my entire being. Meditate on this word day and night. And then you will make your way prosperous. Another one is prayer. Another one is fasting. We've already talked about this. Another one is study of the word. Just examples. These are inward disciplines. Then we have outward disciplines. That is, uh, yes, one of them is simplicity. Simplicity, you're just a simple person. Now I know a lot of us want to be sophisticated. You are so complicated, nobody knows whether you're coming, gone, or going. You are so difficult to figure out. People are wondering, who is this person? No, 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 no. You see, like Christ, you're so simple. Everybody expected that the savior of the world will come riding on chariots. That he will come with 600 of his best chariots. That when Jesus is in town, you're saying the master is in town, he's in town. But when he rode on anything, he rode on a donkey. I don't know whether you have ever ridden on the donkey. It's so uncomfortable. Don't, don't ask me what I was doing riding on a donkey. Don't, let's not get into that. I, I think my wife has just heard about it today. Maybe if she had known, things would be different. But, but the grace of God. <laughs> All right, my time is up. So, simplicity. Simplicity. Solitude is another one of the outward disciplines. Solitude. Yes, you, you stay by yourself. You remove yourself from the people. These are things that Jesus used to practice. Today, solitude can also look like going off social media for a season. Hey, see, two meandamana sa zingine hata tujui tunaandamania nini. 
have really demonstrated sometimes you don't even know why we are demonstrating. You are just like tunaandamana twende twende tunaandamana twendeni. Unajua the word kuandamana inamaanisha kufuatana na watu kuandamana. Si ndio? Haya tuandamana tumeandamana tumeenda tunaandamana naye. Sometimes if I if I stop you and I say si semi kuandamana ni kubaya lakini nakuuliza unaandamania nini? Demonstrating is bad. Tunaandamana. We are demonstrating. Solitude will help you my brother. So that you can get one mind. The mind of Christ. You can understand why do I do the things I do? A lot of the people especially in my generation and lower don't know why they believe the things they are believing. You find somebody is a Christian for many years but they don't know why they do the things they do. Solitude is a remedy for that. It allows God to deal with you as an individual. Submission is another one. Another one is service. These are outward disciplines. Finally, there is corporate disciplines. Corporate disciplines or communal disciplines. One of them is confession. The Bible says in James 5 and 16, is it? Confess your sins one to another and pray for one another. It says, and then you will find healing. My wife the other day was telling me that there is a difference between forgiveness and healing. As you confess one to another, what comes is healing. Some of the things that you've been battling with for so many years, maybe you just need to sit with a believer and just confess one to another and then pray for one another. It says, and then you'll be, you'll find healing, confession. The other one is worship. Worship when you're here, when we've come to church and we are asking, let's worship the Lord, we worship the Lord together. Those are things that mark the Christians. Everywhere you go to a church, you should find worship. Let worship continually rise to God. There are some places where you go to and you're finding believers are gathered but they are struggling to worship. You're wondering, what are you doing? You say, I know, you know, you could worship. Let's just sing, you know, a hymn or let's just, you know, share. Just breathe out. Nah, worship. Another one is celebration. Celebration. You praise the Lord. You celebrate his works. In thanksgiving, you lift up the name of Jesus. You declare his wondrous works. If you do these things, they will keep you from departing from the truth. You will have something to hand over to the next generation. You will find yourself becoming more like Christ. You will be able to bring many people to Christ. You will enjoy this life here. And you will find a place set for you in that life that is coming. Those are the importances of these spiritual disciplines. And you must play a part in them. You and you and you and me. It is your responsibility. You must allow yourself to be on fire. You must decide after you have left this service that I'm going to do something about my life. If you've not been praying, you must carve out some time and say, this is the time I'm going to be praying every day. 
If you've not been reading or studying the word, you must make a decision to begin now. If you've not been doing some fellowship with brothers and sisters, you must make a point to do it now. Those are the things that make believers believers. Those are the things that mark us as Christians. If we don't do them, then we are not worthy of the name. We are failing at what we ought to be doing. Lift up your voice and pray for yourself. Ask that the Lord would help you. Ask that the Lord would turn you around. Ask that the Lord would stir you up inside and stir you up so hard that you will make a decision today to begin to do something that you will practice these spiritual disciplines. Ask that the Lord would put in you a desire to want to know more about the spiritual disciplines. That you will not just leave this service and wait until the next installment. No, but that when you leave this service, you will go out and seek out to know more. So that you can play an active role in what you have been called to do. That it shall not be watered down our Christian faith. You shall say not on my watch. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for everyone that is lifting up their voices today. Oh, what a God you are. We thank you because we today have heard your voice. That the Spirit expressly says that in these days we are living in, there will be many things concerning departing from the faith. But it need not be that way. We can do something about it. Help is available for us. So stir us up, Lord. Help us to do something. Help us to make resolutions from this service today. Help us to be awakened to what our role is. Wake us up from our deep slumber. Star us up where we have become lethargic. Thrust us into the disciplines concerning this life. Make us more like you. So that the world can be influenced. So that the eternity can be filled with brothers and sisters of ours. And so that we ourselves can make it to eternity with you. Because we pray these things in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You want to put your hands together, celebrate Jesus. The Lord bless you.